everyone, my name is Chris and welcome to lesson 2 of how to make iPhone apps with no programming experience. In today's lesson, we're going to dabble in some Swift code and just get our feet wet. What's important in this lesson is I actually want you to try and do it yourself. You should have a Mac and you should have Xcode installed from the Mac App Store. When you open Xcode for the first time, you'll be presented with a menu like this. And we're just going to select this one saying get started with a playground. If you don't have this welcome menu, you can easily open a new playground by going to file, new, and select playground from up here. So we're not starting a whole new app project here. We're using something called a playground, which was newly introduced in Xcode 6. And you can think of a playground as just a lightweight way for us to try and test out some code without fully having to commit to starting a new app project. We're going to get a chance to create a new app project a couple of videos later. But for now, I wanted to just get our feet wet and test out some Swift code. And the key thing I want you to do is to try it out yourself. So launch Xcode on your own laptop and type in what I type in and try it out. So for our playground, we're presented with a name and a platform. So I'm just going to leave that as is. I'm going to save it on the desktop. Okay, so see if you can follow along and type what I'm typing in your playground. So I'm just going to put a string into this variable message. And a string is just a piece of text. Think of it like that. And it's surrounded by these quotes. And this equal sign is me putting this piece of text into a variable called message. So this total line of code is me declaring a new variable called message and putting this piece of text into the variable. So on the right hand side, of this playground, you can see the result of what you just typed. And now, if I want to print, let's say, if I go like that, it will output hello world because that's what I put in it up there. So let's look at some other examples. So that's me putting the value 10 into a variable A. So you can see here that on the right hand side, it kind of gives you uh, a preview of what's happening as you're writing these lines of code. So I put in the value 10 into the variable A, I put in the value 15 into the variable B, and I create a new variable called total, which is equal to the sum of A and B. So if I wanted to print total, you can see that it is 25. So I hope you've been able to follow along so far. Let's try something a little different. So I'm going to say if total is less than 20, then I want to print the text hello. And of course nothing happens because the variable total is a plus b, which we know to be equal to 25, which is not less than 20. So it's not going to execute this line right here. But let's say if we went up here and changed variable a to be 1 instead. Now total is 1 plus 15, which is equal to 16 over here, as we can see. And now this if statement is true total is 16, which is less than 20. And so this line will execute. So an if statement just gives us the power to perform some logic. And we'll go over that in a future lesson. For now, don't worry about trying to memorize the syntax or the structure of what we've written so far. We're going to go through in detail in the future, all of these different uh, Swift mechanics. But for right now, all I want you to do is to try it out on your own computer. Open up Xcode, open a new playground, and type this in and try it out. 
And the reason I'm making you do this is because I found that the most intimidating thing for students when they're learning iOS development is the programming language aspect of it. And I hope that by following along and typing out these statements, you'll find that it's actually very logical and easy to follow, pretty straightforward, and nothing to be fearful about. So that's all I really wanted you to do. In the next lesson, we're going to create a new app project in Xcode, and we're going to walk through the different areas of Xcode so that you can get familiar with it.